you're on. Hi everyone, I am here at the Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good night. Tonight we are in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. And the devotion writer tonight, anybody got a guess? Sure, who's the devotion writer tonight? Well, you just guess. You know some of the names, just guess. You see, go. Nope. It is by. Chris Fox. Nope. Diane No Matthews. Diane No Matthews. All right. <laughs> so let's leave that here and we'll go to Ephesians 3 and I will read the fact for you. The road's wet. It's been raining here. It looked like it was going to storm really bad. I hope it doesn't. I'm afraid the power will go off. But it goes off in the summer here too, so we're not doing nothing. Alright, what did I mark this for? Why am I moment? What's going on? What's going on here? It's supposed to be in Ephesians. I don't know, why am I looking back here? <laughs> oh my goodness. We're going to Ephesians. Not Romans. How do I do that? set, but I guess, I don't know what happened. Ephesians 3. I got it. <laughs> the pages are so thin, they stick together so easily. Alright, in Ephesians 3 we'll be talking about Paul the preacher to the Gentiles, a prayer for the Ephesians. That's it. It's a short chapter. All right. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, sorry, sorry, sorry. In reading this, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men. In other generations, as it is now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets, this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs. Listen to this. The Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and shares together in the promise in Christ Jesus. They're talking about the body. They're talking about the Israelites and the Gentiles making up the body of Christ. And remember, Christ is the head. I became, you know, we're the arms, legs. We're all of us, you know, make it up the body of Christ. If I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power, although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom 
of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you therefore not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you which are at your glory. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your hearts through faith, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who was able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen, guys. That's beautiful. Okay. Sometimes, I don't know, my eyes or something, I have trouble. You know, sometimes I read and skip a line and go to the next and have to go back. I always had a lot of trouble with that, even when I was in school. I don't know what, what's wrong with me, I'm sorry. But I think I, I got it all, so we're good, guys. I'll just go for it. Okay. Sorry, I didn't tell you, um, I'm just not with it today. I've had a really bad day. I forgot to tell you what Diane Mill Matthews' verse is that she picked out to go with her devotion of Ephesians 3, and that's um, verses 20 and 21, which says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's read uh, Diane's devotion. She says, As a high school freshman, my oldest granddaughter, Lacey, signed up for theater class and joined the drama club. In the fall, the class began preparing a short play for the regional championship. Lacey decided to try out just to gain auditioning experience. She ended up with a major role and the judges awarded her an outstanding performance medal. Wow. For the spring musical, Lacey auditioned for a supporting role. She was shocked when the teachers cast her as one of the two female leads, a first for a freshman. Lacey was even more surprised at the end of the year banquet when she received the Best Voice and Best Overall Actress awards. Those of us related to Lacey were not surprised that she did well. We expected that, but we were amazed at how comfortable she seemed on stage and how flawlessly she performed while recovering from bronchitis. Bronchitis, it's awful. We enjoyed seeing her self-confidence and the sheer joy she feels when performing. I asked her, who would you have thought your first year in drama 
would have encompassed so much. It's wonderful when things turn out even better than we'd imagined. But that's the hope we should have every day. Jesus did warn that we will have trouble in the world. But he also said he has overcome the world. Nothing is too much to hope for when his power is at work within us. And we shouldn't be surprised that Jesus has greater plans for us than we do for ourselves. She was just trying out for an audition. Just wanted some, uh, I mean, just wanted some auditioning experience. She got the leading roles. A lot of awards and was honored at the banquet. And she's doing pretty darn good. And the homework, if it's homework here, sometimes it's just a saying. Let's see here. Uh, think of a difficult decision or problem you've been struggling with now. Imagine the best outcome possible. Now ask Jesus to do even more than that. All right, guys, the next Bible study will be in the book of Hebrews, and it'll be Hebrews chapter 13, and it'll be by Grace Fox. Okay, so I will get that all set up later, of course. And now let's read the... Um, new devotion thing, a deep dependence. I had to take a couple of Benadryl. I don't know if it's deter the detergent or what. Because I just started, I just put this shirt on and I've been really, really itchy. And Sherm has to from his. I, I think it's the detergent. I don't know. Sherm was breaking out with bumps. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows with us, right? But it has to be. Because it started just as soon as we put them on. We have very sensitive skin. I do. And Sherm's allergic to everything. Everything. But I am serious. Okay. This one is called Red Tape. And let's see. It never tells you who wrote it. So, Red Tape. And uh, one of the Bible verses. We're going to do Romans 5 through 1, 5. Uh, let's see, and this is from Romans 5.2. Through Jesus, we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. Uh, that poster back there, you see, I keep forgetting to tell you, Jimmy got me that poster. He knows I love Baby Yoda. I'm sorry, Groku or Groku. He's telling me it's not Baby Yoda, it's Groupu or whatever. But I call him Baby <laughs> I love them. I got Baby Yoda setting all over my house now. Because everybody knows I love Baby Yoda. And Dad and Jody got me like everything Baby Yoda for Christmas. I even got it. They even got me a Yoda Cincy burner. I love it. Love it. Jimmy got me a nice uh, Baby Yoda that I really, really wanted. And he didn't even know I wanted it. I love it. It's my favorite. It talks and everything. Anyway, he got me that and surprised me with it the other day. And I kept forgetting it over there. And I thought, Jimmy's going to think, you know, I didn't appreciate that. Because it rolled underneath their entertainment system. And I didn't see it when I was moving. And then I was over there again and it was still laying under there. And I didn't see it again. So I told him today, I really appreciate this, Jimmy. I really do. I truly love it. And I thank you for it. I'm sorry I just didn't see it under the stand. You know, that, that's rude, you know, don't take something somebody gave you. Don't think you don't like it. But I didn't see it. I truly love it. I love anything the kids get me. Because they thought of me, you know. Even if it's something I don't particularly, you know, collect or like or anything, I still love it dearly because it, they thought of me and thought it for me, you know. He knows I love Baby Yoda. He got that. That was so sweet. I always think it's so sweet when they think about me, you know. Anyway, let's get started here with the red tape. See what that means. The expression red tape describes the annoying way bureaucracy prevents things from getting done. 
Originally, the phrase referred to the common practice of binding official documents with red ribbons. In the early 1800s, the term was popularized by the writings of Scottish historian Thomas Carlyle, Carlyle who was uh, protesting governmental foot dragging. Following the American Civil War, the problem of red tape surfaced as war veterans struggled to receive their benefits. Still to this day, they treat our veterans like crap. They were the last ones to get the last stimulus, stimulus check. The last ones, which took a while for us to even get ours. But I think the veterans should have been before anybody else. If it wasn't for them fighting for our country, we wouldn't be free right now. They treat our veterans like crap. The term denotes frustration and disappointment because burdensome hurdles can stop us from accomplishing our goals. Puratic red tape is almost legendary, but there is one place in the universe where it's never an issue, the throne of God. Amen. In Romans 5.2, Paul speaks of Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. When our hearts are broken or our lives are troubled, there is no red tape hindering our access to God. Jesus Christ has paved the way so we can have access to enter boldly into the presence of the King of Heaven. Amen. Hebrews 4.16 Jesus paved the way. Nobody can have an excuse ever in the world that they can't access God. Everybody can pray or somebody pray for you. Everybody has access to God. Rich and poor alike. Remember when your heart is hurting, you don't have to cut through a lot of red tape to present your needs to God. Through Christ, we have full and immediate access. Praise the Lord and thank God we do. Thank God. Sometimes I wouldn't be able to get through the day, like today, without God. I have had a horrible day. God's throne is always accessible to His children. Amen. Amen. All right, let's see what the next one's going to be called. Clean Hands. The next one will be called Clean Hands. So, of course, I'll get that all set up and everything. And now the animal devotion. Everybody pick your animal. Let's see what Sherm picks. Shermie? We will pick. What? Meow. He picked a cat today. All right, everybody else go. You guys ready, Layla? All right. This one is by Kathy Carlton Willis. Let's see, the Bible verse is 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And this one is called Enough. Enough. So don't give away. The, uh, the title, Don't Give It Away. I've got a, I've got a toothache. My tooth's hurting worse and worse. My tooth keeps, uh, pieces of my tooth keep falling off so bad that I've got a hole in my tooth now that goes all the way up to my gums because I have to take a toothpick and you know dig stuff out of it every single time I eat and it goes straight up to my gums the whole it hurts. Hardly any dentists take our insurance though and then what it does is right down the road from us where our doctor is but every I go to her and she says uh, I don't get it because she's pulled on my teeth before but I went to her 
last time and she's like, the nurse came back in and she's like, um, the dentist don't want to um, pull your tooth because she doesn't feel comfortable with, comfortable with it with all the medicine you're on. But she did it before and I was on the exact same medicine. And I was doing my blood pressure and all that. I was fine, fine, fine. Like, cool it, you know, I'll take uh, responsibility. But they made me go to an oral surgeon, which took months to get in. So I know that's what I'd be again. I, I tried to get them just to, uh, you know, let me go to the oral surgeon, send the thing in. But they have to see you first. Just, you know, just to get that money. Just to get that money. It's awful. I told them I was on oxygen and everything. It was hard for me to get out and everything. Sorry, you still have to come in. Anyway, let's get started here. Libby thought she was a night owl, not a calico cat. It's a cat. Sure, we got it right. It's a cat. Did you guys guess a cat? It never fell. Once I got myself tucked into bed for the night, she would jump up and pace back and forth along the length of my bed as if she were walking on the boardwalk. When she neared my face, she purred and begged me to pet her. Then she would walk back down the Broadway toward my feet and curl up next to me as if I were her heater. Oh yeah, they love that. She knew how to get comfortable, repeat over and over. Then all of a sudden, just when I thought the petting had fulfilled her needs, she would jump off the bed and run and have a bite to eat. She sought satisfaction and found it in being petted, in being comfortable, and in being fed, but never for long. I'm a lot like that, if I'm being honest. I seek satisfaction through temporary fixes. I desire comfort. I gain a wanted possession and relax it. Does it really fill the void the way I thought it would? And I seek to be petted, petted too, in the form of praise or attention. Even when others give me the recognition I think I need or deserve, I'm not satisfied. And just like Libby, once I realize that comfort seeking isn't fulfilling me, I go to comfort food to make me feel better. When I evaluate the why, why behind my dissatisfaction, I realize it's because only God is enough. Only God can fill a God-sized void. My Heavenly Father has been there all the time wanting to meet my needs. He sent the Comforter, Holy Spirit, to be my comfort. He whispers words of affirmation to my soul. He provides spiritual bread that leaves me feeling full. What more could I want? Dear Lord, may I find soul fulfillment that goes beyond fulfillment as I receive God's comfort, affirmation, and provision. You are enough. Amen. You are enough, Father. Brother Jesus and Father, you are enough. And we love you so very, very much. You are number one. Always will be. Bad day, very, very bad day. And I think that, what in the world? Sorry, I lost my place here. I'm crazy, you know, they It's almost June, you guys. I'm guessing I pretty much know, let me check here real quick, what the uh, other one's going to be here for tomorrow or the next um, the next Bible study. I think
think I know what it is. I can't really find it right now. But I'm not going to say the title because it might give it away. Okay, so that was everything for our Bible study today, guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow for another Bible study. And I hope if you guys are having a storm or wherever you are, that your power stays on. Bye, guys. Good night.